Hello. In this video, we're going to see a design example for a cascode amplifier. Um, I have drawn my circuit skeleton. Again, a cascode amplifier consists of a common meter stage, Q1, followed by a common base stage, Q2. And uh, let's imagine, just to keep it consistent with other uh, prior design examples we've done, uh, that we select a uh, VCC of 20 volts. And so first I'm going to start with my uh, DC bias analysis. Step number one, I'm just going to select my uh, quiescent collector current, and let's say I select it to be 2 milliamps. Next, I want to set uh, my emitter voltage for the emitter terminal of Q1, VE, or I'm going to say VE1, I want to set it to 1 volt. And so I'm going to choose RE, which is the series combination of RE1 plus RE2. That's the overall emitter resistance for DC bias purposes. Since the capacitor CBE will act as an open circuit for, uh, for DC voltages. To set VE equal to approximately 1 volt. I'm going to call this VE1 to avoid confusion. And again, that's just done for um, DC bias stability. And so my RE is going to be equal to VE1 divided by IC, or 1 volt divided by 2 milliamps, which is my 0.5 kilo ohms. And again, that is the serious combination of RE1 and RE2. So what I know so far is that RE, the sum of those two resistances, should be 0.5 kilo ohms. Uh, I'm going to proceed now to set uh, the biasing resistor network. So choose biasing resistor network. which in this case consists of R1, R2, and R3. Now, notice that um, we want to set the voltage across R3 to be approximately 0.7 volts because we want to turn on, uh, sorry, 1.7 volts because we want to turn on the base emitter junction for transistor Q1. And so I will want BB1 to be equal to the E1, uh, the emitter voltage, or uh, the emitter of uh, Q1, plus 0.7 volts to turn on uh, that base emitter junction. So 1 plus 0.7 volts, that's equal to 1.7 volts. And then my VB2 is going to be equal to um, my VCE1, plus VE1, so basically the voltage uh, on the emitter of terminal 1, plus the voltage across uh, collector to emitter of Q1, meaning this would be VE1, this will be VCE1, and I want my base voltage uh, for the base of transistor 2 to be 0.7 volts higher than this point, which is the sum of VCE1 plus VE1. So I can express that as VV2 equal to VE1 plus VCE1 plus 0.7 to turn on the base emitter junction for transistor Q2. Uh, VE1, uh, we've made it equal to 1 volt. We haven't decided what VCE1 is, and that is up to us as circuit designers uh, to figure out. Now, we do know it needs to be higher than 0.3 volts because we want to keep transistor Q1 out of saturation. Uh, and so I'm going to make it 1 volt. Uh, the reason why I'm leaving some room all the way to uh, 0.3 volts is because we do have um, the, the common emitter stage. We are feeding a signal into the base and the output signal is coming out of the collector. So there's going to be some variation at the collector of Q1 around the uh, DC bias point. Now, the, the gain in this case, the gain stage is really uh, Q2, and so the, the variation at the collector of, of uh, Q1 is going to be small enough that I don't need to have 
um, a lot of output signal swing, but I do need some room for that signal to wiggle. And so I'm going to just um, select one volt. And that plus 0.7. And this is equal to oops, two point seven volts. And so I just need to figure out how do I divide my overall VCC voltage, which is twenty volts, across R one, R two, and R three. And so I will want the R1 or VR3, let's just start because that's the easiest. I want that voltage to be 1.7 volts. I want the voltage across R2 to be 2.7 minus 1.7, meaning uh, the voltage at the base of the second transistor minus the voltage at the base of the first transistor. So um, it's VV2 minus VB1, or 2.7 minus 1.7, which is 1 volt. And then the rest, uh, all the way to VCC, is going to drop across resistor R1. So this will just be uh, VCC minus VR2 minus VR3, or 20 minus 2.7. Seventeen point three volts, and um, now I can select my resistor values uh, so that I get those voltage ratios. And so, uh, one thing that I want to keep into consideration, just as I did before, is that um, in order to meet the requirements of having a perfect voltage divider um, at my input, I will want R three to be much smaller than beta times the resistance looking into the emitter of Q one. And so, I'm going to make my selection based on the following rule of thumb. Uh, I want R3 to be much smaller than beta times um, RE. And much smaller was defined as less than or equal to one tenth of beta times RE. Um, which is 5 kilo ohms, and so that's what I'm going to choose for my R3. And if I follow now the ratios, my R2 will be equal to 3 kilo ohms and my R1 will be 51 kilo ohms. Now you may wonder why I'm always driving R3 to the limit, meaning if it has to be less than or equal to one tenth of beta times RE, why do I choose it to be exactly one tenth of beta times RE? And the reason is R3 plays a key role in determining the input resistance of the circuit. So the higher my value of R3, the higher my input resistance. And that's why where the trade-off is. I want to make it smaller so that uh, my biasing network won't be loaded by the input resistance of the transistor, but I want to make it large so that my input resistance um, will be sufficiently large. Uh, so I have those resistor values, which I'm going to enter now. I have 51K, 3K, and 5K. And the final thing I want to do for my DC bias point is determine the value of RC. And so step number four, I'm going to choose a resistor RC to center output voltage. And so I'm going to try to set the output voltage equal to 10 volts, which is halfway between VCC and ground. And now you may say, well, if you have um, approximately uh, 2 volts, uh, one volt at VE at VE one and another volt from VCE one, right? So you have two volts drop uh, just to keep your uh, biasing point and your transistor Q one happy. Uh, then you don't really have twenty volts of swing, but you really only have eighteen. And so you should uh, set your output uh, point, your VC, uh, for the collector of Q two at halfway between those two points, two volts and twenty volts, and so somewhere. Um, around 18 volts and you can do that that will give you you know maximum output voltage swing I'm just gonna be um, make an approximation to keep my uh, um, calculation simple and so I'm gonna select 
Uh, so set VC equal to half of VCC. That will give me maximum symmetrical output to him, but it'll get me close. And so my VC is equal to VCC minus the voltage drop across RC. I can solve for RC and it will be VCC minus VC divided by IC or 20 minus 10 divided by 2 milli or 5 kilo ohms. So I can now enter my value for IC into the circuit. Um, and that's it. Next thing will be the AC analysis to determine uh, the voltage gain input resistance output resistance. Thank you.